So yes, let's see, what did I stop on giving my shout outs? I see you, Tiffany. Uh, Jeannie, I see you, Jeannie. Hey, Alicia. Uh, let's see. Hey, Miss Cynthia Harriet. Uh, okay. So, yes. So, yeah, we had an awesome time. We had a ooh, mini getaway, you know, mini getaway. Celebrated a friend, friend's 50th birthday, you know. 50. This this is the year. People are turning 50, y'all. This is the this is the year of 50s, 70s, and 30s. <laughs> I named all the decades that our family is celebrating this year, huh? All right. Sister Richard says she said, we'll see you and hear you. Great. All right. Awesome. Awesome. I see all the thumbs up. New Kevin, new Bill. I see you on today. What up, Kev? Yes. Teresa hey, J Tina. say the thumbs up. So that means we are ready we for are lift off. Ready. Ready 50 is the new 30. That's right, Tiffany. 50 is the new 30. That's it. That's it. Listen, y'all have a blessed day today. Tell me something good. What did y'all do to be a blessing to somebody? What you know, you do? already know I was going to ask that. What did you do to be a blessing what to somebody? What did we do to be a blessing? The will of God is we're blessed to, to be, be a, a blessing. blessing. So come on, y'all talk to me before we get into our, our, our little discussion tonight. Let me know what y'all did to be a blessing to somebody. Amen. 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 What's the new 55? <laughs> if 30 is the new 50, 35 is the new 55. You know? <laughs> yes. Um, let's see. Glenda, call me. Call me after we get off of here. Glenda. We need to talk. What well, we talked about before. So, <laughs> I just remember that. Hold on, what Linda say? Linda say she brought two people to breakfast. Oh, she brought two people breakfast. Uh-huh. Nice, nice. I'm blessed to be serving our veterans now. All right. All right, Alicia. Um and Cynthia say, Cynthia say, Carrie say, I got up early to make lunch for Derek. Come on, man. Derek living his best life over there. Man. I see y'all. I see y'all. Man, I didn't even see. Oh, I did see Derek, but he looked like he was walking to the um break room. I should have followed him. He probably was going to get his lunch. Shoots. <laughs> hey, Derek, Derek be getting his walk on too, though. Yeah. Derek be walking around there. Cheryl said probably. she bought lunch for her sister and her nephew. Come on now, nice. Cheryl. It's nice. a blessing. Nice. Anybody else? What else y'all do? What else y'all do? Well, best team. We back on, we live. We back on we got live. A good got a good signal. Come on, God. Look at watch God work. Look, look at, at it. Look yeah. at it. I'm happy. I'm happy yeah. right now. So let's pray. Let's get into the discussion. You know, y'all feel free to comment, you know, because it's an open discussion. It's an open discussion. So we always talk about relationships. So if y'all tune in for the first time, we're gonna talk about the Oh, uh, what girl Tiffany, what you say? She had to speak the word to her job with this. You gotta get out crunk. I did. <laughs> Tim, did she just get crunk by that? That's right. You got to tell the word. I'm, like, I'm getting ready so, to pray. She just busted. Hold on. Wait a minute. I wait said, a minute. See. Speak the word. Speak the word. You have to share the word of God. <laughs> yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you got passionate about that. Though, yes. Right? Former, former Jehovah Witness. Yes. Yeah. Amen. So listen, uh, let's go ahead and pray. Let's get into the discussion. Listen. If you're tuning in for the first time, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Listen, I know you're going to be blessed by something that was said, mm -hmm. something that I may say, Pastina may say, something that Spirit of God may minister to you, or something that may be said in the chat session, session sec, in the comment section that, <laughs> that, may, bless, right. that may bless you. So I'm going to pray and then we get, we'll open up the discussion. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you right now, Father. For this platform you're giving us speaking to the lives of so many. Father, we thank you, Father, for the positive feedback, Father. Father thank you for the word, Father, that we all, Father, have yield to, Father, that our lives are the better. Father, we give you the praise, we give you the glory for perfecting everything that everything. concerns us. In Jesus' yes. name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So let's let's talk about I it. Look at my grandbaby up from school, took her to dance class. All right. All right. That's right. They all go as true. So let's look at let's look at a couple of foundational texts that's gonna allow us to uh, launch into our discussion. Proverbs one is uh Proverbs the twelfth chapter verse nine said a, a, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. I love that. Ephesians two ten say, but we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God 
prepared beforehand, watch this, that we should walk in them. So it lets us know now that the will of God, God's hand is on our life, you know. Tell somebody, God's hand is on my life. God's hand is on my life. Listen, you have to understand now that God's hand is on your life. He's dealing with your life. He's orchestrating your life. And all he's waiting for is you to yield to allow him to participate in the situations, the circumstances, the choices that you're going to make. So when we start looking at this, many times we go through life excited about uh, relationships, excited about different things we're experiencing in life until challenges arrive. Mm -hmm. And then because we don't know how to trust God and plan for a favorable outcome, we walk away from positive situations, positive relationships, and make up excuses for failure. There's a lot of uh, uh, great opportunities that we have experienced in life, and we mishandled it because we didn't have the wisdom, we didn't have the knowledge, we didn't have the discipline, watch this now, to see the will of God come to pass. And we walked away and we made up excuses, you know. And the same way it is in relationships. We walked away from good relationships. Why? Because we weren't willing to put in the work or we didn't have the, the principles that's required to win in life. So what we're going to talk about tonight is we're going to always want to center it around uh, life, uh, practical principles for life and relationship. So we're going to talk about making plans for the, 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 uh, uh, a better relationship or a better future. Making okay. plans for a better relationship, or we can say a better future. Right. So we start talking about who don't want better. I think we all want better. <laughs> who 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 don't want better? I mean, me and Miss Tina been married twenty years, y'all, and we still want better. We yes. still want better. We still want more. We still want to uh, enjoy another level for twenty and a half years. Twenty and a half That's years. Right. Come on, add six those years. Ago. Add those years six months up. Ago. I've been yeah. singing that song for six months. For six that's months. That's right. Now. That's right. 20 years, 20 and a half years now. <laughs> Listen, things don't just happen. Watch this now. They must be planned. So we got to remember that things ain't just going to happen. You have to they, they must be planned. So we got to understand now planning provides the Spirit of God a avenue to flow into situations to bring forth the will of God. We can believe that it's the will of God, but what are we doing to partner with God so that the will of God can come to pass? God, God's will will come to pass in your relationship. God's will will come to pass in situations and circumstances that you are committed to that will honor God and bring glory to the kingdom of God. So <clears throat> um, God works with our plans. Watch this. Now look at the definition for planning, right? Mm -hmm. Planning. What's the definition for planning? Planning is the act of planning a systematic schedule and events to accomplish a predetermined goal. So that's the, that's the proper way of planning. Mm-hmm. Planning is what now? The act of planning a systematic schedule. So this is a consistent schedule. Systematically, systematic. I'm going to work this schedule mm -hmm. to accomplish a predetermined goal. So I have to be disciplined. So you have to have a goal in order to set a plan. I got to have a goal in order to set a plan, but I have to be consistent. You have to be consistent. So things just don't happen. Things don't just happen. They have to be planned. God works with a plan. Failure to plan is simply planning to fail. Mm -hmm. Failure to plan. When I fail to plan, when I, I'm planning now, but I'm planning to fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I don't put the effort to say, what is my plan going to be? I don't care what the situation is. You know, that's one thing with me. I've always, I always thought about a plan. What is going to be my plan in life? What am I going to do? If situation circumstances come up, what am I going to do? I always want to have a plan, not understanding that God had allowed me to understand that. God wants us to understand that every situation, every circumstance, he will give us a way out. So your relationship challenge is not going to fix itself, fix itself. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times people think, well, you know, we just, we together, but hey, times will get better. Yeah, they will get better, but you but can make them better. what you doing to make it better? Yeah, what you, what you doing to make them better? Wait it's going to require you developing your faith based on scriptural principles. Right. Things will get better. I, I agree with you, mm -hmm. but it's not promised right. unless you're standing on the word. Right. It's going to happen. It's going to require you to develop your faith based on scripture, prayer. not just a hoping and a praying, but right. you're going to have to be standing on the word. God is only in the business of confirming the word with signs following. And it goes back to what um, senior pastor was teaching on Sunday. You have to develop your faith. Develop your faith. So, you know. Oh, such a powerful teacher. Yes. We're going to talk about a little bit about, about that lesson at the end. Okay. Because that's mm -hmm. going to be good. Because that was a son that was powerful. Man. Yes, it was. Listen, uh, if you're willing to take a stand for a better relationship or marriage, God will meet you at the level 
of your expectation as long as your faith is based on a biblical promise that God has to honor. Oh, listen, you have to understand that God's will is for you to succeed in your relationship. That's the will of God. Listen, if you're single, it's the will of God for you to date the right person, build the right foundation for a supernatural relationship or a relationship with God. That's why you got to make sure that the person that you're dating is somebody that's sensitive to the understanding and the will of God for your life or for the relationship. You can't just be dating without a plan. You got to have a plan when you go into a relationship. Dating with a purpose. You know, when, uh, when me and Tina started dating, I told Tina right, right away, and I told her father, I told her, you know, we started to meet her father, Apostle was talking, I told her father, I wasn't just dating to get to know her, I was dating with the intent to marry. So my time, when I started dating, Tina, my team, I already knew the next person I started dating, I was I was committed to marrying this person, right? So I ain't got time to be dating everybody. You know, I had to wait till it was the right person. Amen. Look what the Lord has done. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, watch this now. We've been engineered by God with the ability to look past our unwanted circumstances. This is so powerful, though, and grab a hold to the possibilities of a better day. See, God said, even though you go through situations and circumstances, he said, you have the ability, based on kingdom principles, to look past negative situations that you're temporarily experiencing and have hope and faith in a better day. Mm-hmm. Romans the 17, 4 and 17 says, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who believe, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. So we have to begin to begin to see a better future in our relationship. We got we can't just get caught up with the seasons that we're going through that may be challenging, right? We may be building a foundation and all of a sudden something come up where trust has been violated. But we're going to have to realize that, hey, I got to get past this. And if we're going to get past this and we're going to stay together, we got to get to a place where we got to begin to see a better day. And that's the way God designed us, making plans for a better future. So if you're in a relationship right now, you're in a marriage, especially a marriage. If you're in a marriage right now, you know, you need to be able to get your faith locked into a better future together. You know, me, me and Tina always talked about the future. We always talked about, uh, regardless of what we're going through, we always talked about the future. And that's not to say that we didn't have some challenges coming up, because we did, right? Mm-hmm. But we understood the word of God, and we knew that, hey, this too shall pass. Right. You know, we've been in a relationship situation. It may have been a health challenge in the relationship, you know? And we've all had our own set of health challenges along the way in 20 years, right? But at the same time, we always believe God for a better day better day when we will be uh, uh, able to enjoy the fullness of our days. Amen. So you have to begin to look at at night. I see so many people caught up and they thought chunking rocks and talk about people, each other like a dog. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you, you just forgot y'all was in love so much. Listen, y'all got two kids to prove it, but now all <laughs> of a sudden y'all can't stand each other because of a situation and a circumstance that occurred. And a lot of times we can get so caught up in the moment that we can say a lot of stuff that we regret later. Amen. So we we must understand uh, uh, who we are as believers. We walk by faith and not by sight. Not by sight. Before we can make a decision to walk away or terminate a relationship or, or let's say a marriage or tolerate a distasteful marriage, we are obligated to maximize our faith and believe God for a supernatural move. Believe God for a supernatural move. And tell somebody, God is the master planner. God is the master planner. And he has created us in his image and his likeness. So if God is the master planner, we're a master planner, right? So Genesis, the first chapter, verse 26, and say, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all that the earth that creeps, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. God has massively surveyed our whole life, and there's nothing that we can experience in life that should not, that should overtake us. So we're looking at God's plan for our life. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, we're excited about it. We get all excited about the plan that God has for our life. But then all of a sudden, we start going through some challenging times. Why is it that we're going to throw away our faith and all that we were believing for prior to the situation? We got to get to the point where we got to begin to get in faith. That's what your faith is yes. for, to navigate through difficult times. If you're in a situation, let's just say you 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 are uh, your job laid you off. 
So what are you going to do? You still going to believe that God, you, you're not going to believe that God is still your provider? That God is still increasing you more and more? You have to believe that God has your best interest at heart. And listen, he's going to confirm the word with signs following. When you start getting in faith for the word and you start confessing the word, faith will come. And then God will meet you at the level of your expectations. So I says in Isaiah 40, 16, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient time, things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So God said, look, I, I, it's, it's, it's already been written that you're going to be blessed and you're going to prosper and you're going to have enjoy this good life. But you got to believe and hold me accountable for it and allow me to confirm my word with signs for all. So there are three things God has already planned for our life. Three things. There's three things God has already planned for our life that you can take it to the bank. Number one is he's already planned our salvation. salvation. Yes. Once I receive salvation, I step into a supernatural way of living. And that's what you got to understand. It's the will of God for your life to be saved. It's the will of God for you to be saved. And we're going to allow you to participate and a principle that will allow you to be receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior before we leave tonight, before we go out the air. But you got to understand, it's the will of God for you to be saved. It says in Romans 10, 9, that if I confess with my mouth, the Lord Jesus, and I shall believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. It's a simple process, but a decision that will change your life forever. Listen, and then what else? What else can we believe in? He's planned our success. He's planned our salvation, and he's planned our success. He's already blessed me. He's just waiting for me to act like his soul. He's already blessed my relationship. He was just waiting for me and Tina to get an agreement and start treating each other with the respect that we deserve. And once we started doing that, then God started renewing our minds. God started dealing with our hearts. And God started allowing his will to come to play. Come to play. His come will to come to pass. So number one, he's planned Plan our, our salvation. salvation. Number two, he's planned Plan our, our success. In Ephesians 1, 3, it says, blessed, blessed be the God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So he's already blessed us. He's planned our success. I mean, he planned our salvation. He's planned our success. And look at number three. He's planned our support. I can expect God to always raise up somebody somewhere to use their power, their ability, and their influence to help me in my time of need. So, so you got to understand God has made you three promises that will navigate you through any situation and circumstance that you're going to face. He's planned your He planned your salvation. Once you step into and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then all of a sudden you're on the winning team. You have all the support that you need. And then he's planned our success. And then he's planned our support. You got all the support. You need to quit trusting in people and trust in God. Trusting God will work on the people. Yes. All you got to do is trust in God trust and let God move on the hearts of people. And listen, and when it comes to pass, listen, you thank, you thank God for everybody that he raised up that was obedient to play a role in his will. But at the end of the day, you got to give God the glory. It's the will of God coming to pass in your life. And you got to understand, if you're in a relationship, you're in a marriage now, you're going to have to trust God that he's able to move on the heart of your spouse. And I'm telling you, over a period of time, it gets to the point where you have to begin to trust God. And God will allow you to, to grab a hold to the peace that passes all understanding and navigate through difficult times. Mm -hmm. Amen. So when it comes to our relationships and marriage, we have to plan a successful outcome. You got to get to the point where you got to plan a successful outcome. What's 1 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation has overtaken you except such as coming to man. But God, God is, is faithful. faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation Here will also make the way is. of escape that you may be able to bear it. He said, look, he won't allow you to be tempted than that that you're able to handle. But watch this now. But with the temptation, he will all may, always make a way of escape. That sounds like a plan. Yes. What kind of plan are you presenting to God? Because God say, listen, in every situation, I'm going to give you a way out. Mm -hmm. But I need you to come up with a plan that I can help you. So you gonna have to, what, what, what kind of plan am I looking for? I got to, I got to, I got to trust that the word is going to, God is going to order my stuff based on the word. Right. Yeah. The Bible says steps of a good man 
are ordered by the Lord. So there's two interesting principles of planning that we have to look at. We start talking about, okay, I'm in a situation, Pastor, and uh, in my relationship right now, and I'm telling you, you don't understand what she's dealing with, what I'm dealing with with her. Or uh, she's saying, I don't, you don't understand what I'm dealing with with him. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't got to understand. All I got to know is, do you understand where your help come from? Right. And if you understand where your help come from and you can trust God's will and God's plan for your life, then I'm telling you, you can sit back and watch God work. When I say sit back, I don't mean sit back and don't do nothing, don't participate. Right. But I'm saying at the same time, you can sit back and tap into the grace, grace. and the patience until change comes. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need. So it's two interesting principles of planning. A plan is a product of the faith process. So you have to look at when you're planning you got the planning got to be part of the faith process. My plan is going to require me to use my faith. You got to use your faith. You have process. to use your faith in the process. And then the, the, the second thing, the rest of the plan is plan must be flexible and believable. My plan has to because has to be something I can believe in. You right. can't sit there and set your faith, <laughs> get in faith for something you can't believe in. Right. You got to believe it. <laughs> but I, I believe in the morning she'll be a different person. Well, <laughs> you may want to just believe in the morning she don't get up cussing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't believe. You know, oh, we got you got to be flexible now. You got to believe that, that she got up this morning and she ain't say nothing negative. She was positive, or he didn't say nothing negative. Positive. Father, I just thank you right now. You working on his heart. Mm -hmm. You know, you wake up, God. I was just believing that when I wake up in the morning, he's gonna be a new person. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. And I said, just while you praying, he beating on the door, on, on, on the bathroom door. You're in there praying. He beating on the door, cussing. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, you got to get to the point where you're going to have to tap into the grace uh, uh, and the peace of God. God said he'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is staying on him. Yeah, he'll give you the peace that passes all other things. You have to tap into the peace and the grace to navigate through difficult times. Why? Because I'm believing, listen, I'm believing for a better future. Mm -hmm. we, you know, you, me, me and Tina have been together, like I say, for over 20 years. And it's time where we had to believe for a better future. Mm -hmm. We have to believe that things were going to get better. Because divorce was not an option for us. Mm -hmm. You know, in the beginning, it was one of the rocks we threw around, but then we put those rocks up. We said, well, we are really trivial. We're using that right. to try to get the been response. There, done that. We, we, we're using that. that to try to get the response we want in the argument. Right. And all of a sudden, we wasn't playing foul. So we right. quit saying that's foolishness. And then we just started, look, it got time when we just had to, we, we both just, got the got the quiet treatment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I ain't got nothing good to say, so I ain't, saying, say nothing. Nothing at all. I ain't saying nothing. I don't want to <laughs> say nothing good about you. <laughs> but we had to believe God for a better future. And God couldn't move with us not saying nothing to each other. He right. wanted to work with us to begin to sow the seeds of love, the seeds of of forgiveness, the seeds of patience, the seeds of long suffering. Yeah. The seeds of forgiveness. The seeds of forgiveness. You said unforgiveness. I said unforgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> the seeds of forgiveness. forgiveness yes. and, and God works with a plan now. Look what it says in Luke 14 and 20. I love this scripture. It says, But which of you intending to build? Mm -hmm. That you didn't sit down first and come to cause, but he has enough to finish it. At least after he had laid the foundation and now it's not able to defend. All who sin began to mark saying, look, this man and this woman that got married. Now look, they saw about how it was all happening. Now all of a sudden, they talking about getting a divorce. Wasn't able to defend it. Why? Because you got to lay the foundation. Got you get into a foundation. relationship, you get into a marriage, you got, to, you got to have some never again. Never again, we're going to talk divorce. Never again, we're going to be disrespectful to each other. If I'm feeling some type of way, I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to take that to God. I'm not going to dump that all on my spouse. Amen. And sometimes we got to give each other room to grow right. up. Yes. Yeah. God gave us room to grow up and he still deals with us now. We're still growing up. Yeah. But look, when God promised this incredible covenant of marriage, he was able, he was very detailed and gave roles and assignments to the husband and the wife. Genesis, the, uh, uh, the first okay. chapter, verse 28, what does it say? He said, then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So he gave us. He gave us detailed instructions. Instructions to be fruitful and multiply. Right. And look and what he said. Rule. Yeah, and to rule. He gave us the detailed instructions on what was required of us as husband and wife. He gave us our roles. Look, in Ephesians, he, he was addressing the husband. He said, uh, uh, he said, he told the husband, he said, uh, husband, love your wife just as Christ also loved the church. 
and gave himself for her that he might sanctify her and cleanse her. Yes. That, he, that he might like sanctify that. her. Why was he giving himself? That he may sanctify her, brothers. You're trying to get your wife to act right. You're trying to get her to respect you. Look what it say. The only way you're going to do that, God said, as a husband, give yourself. You're going to have to give yourself for her that uh, uh, and gave himself for her that he may sanctify her and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word that he might present her to himself as a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or uh, any such thing that she should be holy without blemish. So he's saying, look, he's saying, look, what you're going to have to do is this. You're going to have to begin to confess that word over here and live this word before her. And your witness will sanctify her, right? Or sister, it may sanctify him. But it's like you can't sit here and keep telling him, but you have to speak that word over his life, right? right. And then at the same time, and what's going to be a reflection, what you're going to present is you're going to present her when you're speaking that word over her and uh, you're loving her and you living this righteous life. That word is going to have an effect on her life. Oh, and yeah, now okay. she ain't got the front no more. She really happy. <laughs> yeah, she really yeah. happy. She ain't got to say, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. He all right. No, she's going to be talking. She's going to be singing your praises. She's going to be talking about how much she loves you, how wonderful you are. Mm -hmm. wow. That ain't something that you got to try to force her to do. When you live in that word and you confess that word over her, God already knows how to deal with her heart. God already knows how to deal with his heart. And that's why I see a lot of times sisters, I'm not picking on you or nothing, but I'm saying a lot of times single sisters will go and go get somebody mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden try to change them. You'll get somebody, you know, he ain't committed to church, he ain't committed to the word, but then you go get him and you want God to bless that relationship. You know, I'm just saying you're going to have to have the grace for that because it may take him a lot longer to change if he ain't committed to the word. Well, I'm just going to live the word before. Well, I believe that you are able to do that. But at the same time, you want to have some grace for it. You know, look, then when it looks at uh, he's dealing with the feet, he dealt with her, but then he came back and he dealt with the wife. First Peter 3, 3. Why not look? Hold on now, y'all talking about the brothers giving himself over. That's what I'm talking about, Pastor. Preach to these brothers. Amen. But let's see. God is not a respecter person now. Look what he said about the women now in 1 Peter 3. Wives. Wives. Be submissive Woo, that's to not, your own. Be husband. submissive. That's not a cuss word. That's not a cuss word. Submissive. Be submissive to, to your own oh, husband. Hold on. Did it just say your own husband? Your own husband. So you can't be out there submitting to some other woman's husband. Oh, no. You can't be out there having thinking that you're in a relationship with somebody that's married and you think God gonna bless that. Oh, they say that they say that's been over with. They ain't no. he, they ain't even they ain't living together. That ain't got your nothing to do with it. Husband. They married. He said, be submissive to your own, own husband. husband. That even if some do not obey the word, it is. word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. That is. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. Yeah, yeah. So now what they're saying, and listen, and, and, and wives, listen to me now. That's not that that doesn't mean you let somebody walk all over you, oh, but no. you but you trust that God is leading you and he will allow you to minister to your spouse. Right. And that's that, that's when that's where you, you have a strong woman, you know. I love this whole movement, how women are being honored in her space. We should they should always been honored, but I just love how they're being honored. And we are we are a great model with our, our a a female pastor. senior pastor. Yes. She does a great job with the grace and anointing for her to lead a mega church. But I love it that. But then also, I love the balance that I see with wives that are strong, but yet still they're still submissive to their husband. I love the balance. And it requires a certain level of balance. It requires a certain level of balance. And uh, we have a lot of great examples of that. Powerful women who understand their role and how they're able to balance it with a certain level of, of, of grace and submission uh, that honors God in their relationships. Uh, there's three ways, there's three ways you can receive a plan. Number one is through wise counsel. Get from some, those who have wisdom. your best interests at heart. Get some wisdom. The Bible says there's wisdom in the multitude of counsel. Right. Uh, uh, so either if I'm, 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 I'm in my relationship, I'm dealing with situations, I need a plan. I need a plan. So why do I get a plan? I can't go to my girlfriend, mm -hmm. you know, and tell her she ain't, she already didn't want me being with him anyway. Mm -hmm. She wasn't in agreement with the relationship anyway. So where I'm gonna get my plan? You gotta go get it from wise counsel. Uh, uh, number two is by direct revelation. When you receive revelation from the Word of God, you can be reading or you in church and seeing pastor teaching that word, and that word may register in your spirit that this is what you you planning on divorcing him. Mm -hmm. 
But then all of a sudden, well, you didn't have grounds now. But then all of a sudden, the will of God said, no, I need you to stand. I need you to take a stand. Listen, I'm telling you, there's so many people that have made a decision to divorce. And then God dealt with their heart. They pumped the brakes, right? Mm -hmm. Tapped into the grace for that relationship. And today they got an incredible testimony. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I don't know the details of your relationship. So I'm not trying to encourage you. If you may be dealing with a knucklehead or somebody, mm -hmm. I'm not telling you a abuse relationship. I'm not telling you that God say stay. I ain't telling you make that decision, whatever your witness is. But I'm saying, listen to the, how the God is leading you. How is, how is the spirit of God leading you? Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, number one is through wise counsel, wise direct counsel revelation, revelation, or through the spirit of okay. wisdom. When the spirit of God challenges your desires with the conviction or at peace, that gives you clear direction. Amen. Oh. Never abandon peace. Ooh, never abandon. That's a word for somebody. Never abandon never peace. Abandon Where's peace. your peace at in the situation? Not about what somebody wants you to do or what you think. What do you got peace about? And let peace be your guide. God will give you peace about situations and circumstances on the decision that you need to make. Your plan ignited by your faith was designed to allow you to walk in continuous victory as you journey through life. Your plan ignited by faith. You got a plan and, it, and, 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 and you're in faith. It's ignited by faith, by this word. You were designed to allow you to walk in continuous victory as you journey through life. Three reasons why a plan is the product of the faith process. Number one is why. Number one is the God kind of faith produces results. Three reasons why a plan is the product of the faith process. Uh, number one is because the God kind of faith produces results. So, What's number two? Number two, faith without a workable plan is dead. Faith so, without works. Faith without dead. works is dead. Right. So you can't say you're in faith, but you ain't got no plan. You ain't, you ain't you doing ain't, nothing. Yeah, you're not doing I'm that. in faith for a job, but you ain't got up all week to go look for one. Oh. God know where I'm at. Uh -uh. <laughs> Listen, go get go 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 plow application. Listen, number three, God always provides a way of escape as you stand, stand in faith. In God faith. gonna give you a plan. God gonna give you a plan. But you gotta stand God in always, faith. God is always inspiring your plans, encouraging your faith, so that the kingdom of God can be glorified with the outcome of your situation. God already knows what He's gonna do and what He desires to do. My question is, have you studied the word enough to know what his expectations is for your life? Mm -hmm. See, you could be in any situation and you could be enjoying it, the goodness of the Lord. And then all of a sudden that could be an interruption in your plan or what you thought was going, what you was going to experience. And that doesn't mean the will of God is still not for your life. But how are you going to navigate through that? Is it is it not to who oh, the devil is so busy? Mm -mm. Is he busy? If, he, if you feel like it's the devil, then you already know the will of God is for your life. It ain't for the devil to come in. The Bible says the devil come to steal, to kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundant. So I don't care if you feel like that it's an attack by the devil. You already know what the will of God is for your life based on this word. And what you have to do is stay in the word. That's why when you stay in the word, all of a sudden, you know what your next move is immediately. When you're in the word, see, sometimes when you ain't in the word, I, I see a lot of people that they 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 try they they buying time because they trying to go get the scripture, they're trying to find out what they need to do. But those of us who are in the word and we respect the word as being the govern and the standard for our life, whenever there's a crisis, the reason why we recover so fast mm -hmm. because we already know what our they next move is. Right. We already know what our next move is. That's why you got to get to a place where you got to stay in faith and not try to get in faith. That's right. You got to stay in faith. You got to listen to, listen the, word to the word in every situation. You got to listen to the word on finance. You got to listen to the word on healing. You got to listen to the word on success. You got to listen to the word on, on marriage. Relationship. Why? Yeah. On relationship, on marriage. Why? Because you always got to stay in faith because that's going to be your safeguard. And the, the enemy may come in. The Bible says, listen. Listen, the weapons may be formed. Look, no weapons formed against me shall prosper. So the weapons may be formed. We're not saying it ain't gonna it ain't gonna form, but he said it ain't gonna prosper. Not gonna prosper. Why? Because we got this word. And as soon as I get any type of evidence that this is not the will of God for my life, I already know what I need to do. I'm gonna stay in faith and I'm gonna watch God work. That's what happens. I'm gonna stay focused, I'm gonna stay in faith. And then I'm going to watch God work. 
And that's what happened. We ain't exempt for the Bible said raise on the just as well as the unjust. So we, our relationships is not off limits to God. I mean, to the devil. So the devil can say what he won't, do what he won't. But at the same time, no, uh, look at shall not come near me. Shall not. Listen, we always win. Always. And, and, and whatever you're going through in your relationship, don't throw it away. Don't get to the point where you start talking negative because that's what the devil do when he gets you to start getting your mouth in agreement with the circumstance and the situation. That's when you that's when you got a challenge. Now you're in a faith fight. But God say, listen, he said, I'm going to keep you in perfect peace. Why? Whose mind is stayed, is stayed on me. I love that David. David said, watch God work. Listen, Jer I'll leave you with this in Jeremiah. <clears throat> living, live, living by me. Look what God said. This is God's plan for you. Look what he says now. For I know the plans I have for you, said the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. That's God's plan for your life. So you got to stay in faith now for a future and a hope that God has planned for you. God said, look, seek first the kingdom of God. And live a righteous life, all these things shall be added to you. If you obey and serve him, you shall spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. If I am willing and obedient, I shall eat the good of the land. So you have to understand that God has a plan for your life to keep you in perfect peace. And all he wants to do is just add to your life. Your life is pre-programmed to increase on a continuous basis. Oh, I need to say that again. Your life is pre-programmed pre -programmed. to increase on a continuous basis. Continuous basis. God said he wants to take you from faith to faith. He wants to increase you more and more, you and your children. So if God is planning to increase you, God is planning to bless you more and more, then why do you feel like what you're experiencing is the will of God, that, it, that if it's subpar than that? If you're dealing with a crisis right now, why do you think it's the will of God for your life? Well, you know, the devil been busy right now. We're just going through because of what I did. I went through this. Listen, you have to get your mind right. Get your words right. Get your mind right. Get your mouth right. Get your heart right so that the will of God can come to pass in your life. Amen. 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 Somebody say that. Days in prosperity and years in plenty. Come on now, Sandra. That's what I'm talking about. Listen, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, Father, for the encouraging word, Father. For the listeners tonight, Father, I thank you right now that you begin to bless the, the works of their hand, bless their plans, Father. Father, and that's, that's a plan, Father, that needs to be modified. Give them the wisdom on the correction that need to be made, Father, so that your will can come to pass. Father, we thank you right now, Father, as we set our hands to prosper. Father, I thank you that everything we set our hands to you calls to prosper. I thank you right now, Father that you're giving clarity about to our thoughts right now. You're giving us peace. You're keeping our mind in perfect peace right now, Father, as we begin to obey you and stand in faith. Father, I thank you right now, Father, that you're meeting us at the at the level of our expectation. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Listen, I told you that I'd give you an opportunity because earlier in the lesson we was talking about one of the uh, one, one of the plans that God had already made, one of the things that God had already planned for your life, and one of them was he planned for our salvation. So listen, listen, all you got to do is just really just follow me in this prayer. And if you would just recite this prayer, listen, you've already tapped into one of the promises. And But this is what happens, though. Once you receive Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Now, listen, all, all things have passed away. All things have become new. He will forgive you of everything that you've ever done. He'll forgive you. Wipe your slate clean. He ain't going to bring it up unless you bring it up. Right. Mm -hmm. But then what happens is now you're in right standing with him. And you have an opportunity to, to go before him. And everything that he's promised in his word, you're entitled to. Amen. Amen. I want to lead you in this prayer right now. If you repeat this after me. I know without Jesus, I'm lost. I know without Jesus, I'm lost. I don't want to be lost. I want to be lost. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe Jesus died for my sins. And he rose and again. He rose again. I actually come into my heart. I actually come into my heart. Now, now fill me with your power. Fill me with your power. That I may live, so that I may live this overcoming this life. Overcoming I declare, I declare from this day forth, this day forth I, will live a life I will live a life pleasing to you, pleasing to you in, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Listen, if you prayed Amen. that prayer for the first time, listen, welcome to the kingdom of God. You're on the winning team. Mm -hmm. Listen, I want you to put your name in the comment section so we can celebrate you tonight. Listen, we want to celebrate you now because I'm telling you, God has a plan for your life. 
Remember, I told you that God, what three things I told you, he had planned for our salvation, salvation. he's planned our success, yes. and he's planned our support. support. Listen, I'm going to tell you where your support is going to come yes. from. Listen, I need you to go to New Light. Put it on the screen, Pastor Tanya, so I can let them know. I need you to go to newlight.org slash NLC Journey to connect with you. Listen, I'm going to tell you, I was saying your pastor, I was, I was saying your pastor has a support team for you along this journey. I don't care where you're at right now in your faith. They're going to meet you at the level of your expectation. They're going to show you the principles that you need to apply, the words you need to stand on. They're going to give you a confession, whatever that you need along this journey. That's the support that you need. Listen, we, we applaud our senior pastor for her team, giving us the support that we need. And look, I'm excited. I just need you. To, you can scan the QR code or you can go to newlight.org. We'll capture your information. Newlight.org slash NLC journey. We'll capture your information. Somebody will reach out to you and we'll help you along this journey. Amen. 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 Well, listen, it's offering time. Yes. You know what time it is? Offering time is time to sow a seed now. Amen. We want to sow a seed. We want to target our seed for tonight. We want to target our seed for our plan. For plan. Yes. We want to target our seed for strategy, plan. plan. Plan and strategy. You may say, well, Pastor, I, I, I we, we good over here. We don't really need no plan. Well, yeah, you got to always have a plan because you got to always be believing for something. It ain't got to be where you got to be in trouble to have a plan. You need to have a plan for increase. You need to have, because remember now, we say we're planning. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we say we're making plans for a better future together. So now, what what is your plan for a better future together? And I know you probably say, think about it. When when y'all got an agreement, y'all made plans of hope, God showed up. Amen. So listen. God is the same God. All he's waiting for you to do is make a plan, stay focused, stay in faith, and then watch God work. That's Terry. That make a plan. Make a plan. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay in faith. Stay in faith. And watch God work. So here are the different ways that you can get your seed in the ground tonight. Go to newlight.org slash give, or you can text new light to 71441, or you can go to the Giveify app, um, look for New Light Church, address 1535, and then you can give that way. Or you can go to Cash App. That's the dollar sign, New Light Church, all one word. Or you can go to PayPal. PayPal is at New Light Church. And then you can also go give by going to Zelle. That's give at newlight.org. Or you can mail your seed in or drop it off at the corporate office at our north location. But those are the different ways that you can get your seed in the ground on tonight for your relationship. Amen. Amen. Get your seed in the ground for your relationship. Amen. We got any questions in that? Oh, no, I didn't see any oh, questions. We good time. Didn't see any questions, but I did want to just go over a couple of announcements. Um, we said we we're going to talk about Sunday. We said we we're going to talk about Sunday. That, that, that I oh, seen yes. the pastor taught that word. Yes. Uh, seen pastor teaching a, a new series on according to your faith. According so, to your faith. You can never get enough. Um, lesson, lessons on faith. I mean, faith is the foundation. That's something that you can listen to. It's actually the faith. You should actually listen to the faith series weekly. Mm-hmm. That's something that you should keep on on a um a rewind, a replay. Mm-hmm. Faith, faith, faith message. So, but also, you know, like we was talking to this night about making plans for a better future. Mm-hmm. You need, they need to go. We'll encourage them to go back and listen to the Sunday message. Yes, I think that will really encourage you because. Within that discussion, yeah, that Tiffany lesson. said she had to repeat the message. Yeah, well, but yeah, that's one of the messages that you just yeah, listened to. Yeah, you know, it was. I mean, Pat, um, singing Pastor Doctor I, she broke it down. Yeah, she broke it down. I don't even think she finished. She didn't even get to her last three points because she kept on saying she had three point, three more points. But it, we went into the time of worship. You know, you know, you, you know, you know, you go to the table, you full, yes. you can't eat no more. You might want to get up. There's, there's plenty more food on the table. We full. Yeah. Everybody left full. Yes. When nobody mad, everybody was excited. Everybody got yes. what they needed. And so I encourage you to go back and listen to the message. Yes. I think there will be principles in that that you'll be able to apply to your relationship or any area of your life that I think that she'll give you the... Uh, yes, uh, Tiffany, let me know when you're coming to the light. Let me know when you're coming. You got to come soon. That's right. Um. Oh, announcement, 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 announcement. Our founder's birthday appreciation is coming up his actual birthday is this coming monday our, our pastor is going to be seven zero the big seven oh mm-hmm. 70 years old seven years young with his young looking self <laughs> yes he's going to be 70 and um we're having a uh, uh 
birthday celebration for him on Friday, September the 2nd at 7 p.m. Um, ask that you register to be a part of it. The register is um, text 70BDAY to 71441. It's going to be an awesome, awesome affair to celebrate and honor our apostles. So I trust that you're doing what you what you can do to be there, be in the house. It's a semi-formal affair, you know. King, is, kingdom trailblazer. Yeah, he's a, he is a, a kingdom trailblazer. You know, listen, he's respected all over the country. Uh, and so we want to come and celebrate our, our founder, our founder. Yes. Um, and then what else we have? I think this week we have Journey Connect Group. So make sure Thursday you tune in for Journey Connect Groups. And then, of course, on tomorrow, we have our Better Self Night. So tune in for Better Self Night at 7 p.m. on tomorrow. So, yes, that is it for our announcements on today. Thank you all for bearing with us, too, having some patience and standing in faith for the signal tonight. Yes. And we got all excited. And then all of a sudden, but now that we make the, we make the jump to the other one, fine. It, 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 it did was great. smooth. Yeah, it was real smooth. See, we had, you know, we talked about making plans for better. We had made plans for better. But even when your plans get disarrayed, you still have to come up. You, you got to keep it moving. So we had to come up with another plan. <laughs> and you ain't let it steal your joy. I, you can't let it steal your joy. When stuff happens, you be having your plan all laid out because we had already had it laid out. We got a new location. <laughs> wow, wow, perfect. Seven o'clock at Wi Fi start acting crazy. But you know what? Ain't let it steal my joy. No, no, no. <laughs> You know, you know how somebody be acting when they know they looking cute. They know they looking oh cute. Oh my goodness! I see that. I see you saying, "Nobody sit in my job. You checking out your makeup the whole time." I see. <laughs> I see you doing it. I see you watching. Ooh, it was that uh, it? Yep, that's uh -uh. what I said. Uh -uh. That's it. Listen. Well, it's good to see um both my members on. I seen um uh, Sandra um Lois, Sandra Lois. I seen her uh, on, and then I seen Sister. Um, Sister Haynes, what's Sister Haynes' first name? Terry, hmm? what's Sister Haynes' first Sister name? Who? Sister Haynes. Haynes. <laughs> yes, I said Sister Haynes, but it's Sister. I, I I know her name, but I can't think of it right now. I'm saying Sister Haynes. Sister. Um. What, what what do I what do I dress up like? Do I dress up we don't Haynes? call her Haynes. Well, you saying Haynes like that's what I call. What do I call? Her? She here in Houston. Who are you talking about? Yes, sister. <laughs> you talking about? Wait a minute. <laughs> Let me look at my phone because I see Haynes and it threw me off because you know I don't know. Henrietta. Yes, Henrietta. I couldn't even think of Henrietta. Why couldn't I think why, your name why you today? Say Haynes? That's a last name. Yes, yeah, see. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just know. So I, well, yeah, it is. Yeah, thank you, Sandra. Sister, Sister Lois was helping me. She's a Henrietta. Yeah. yeah. No, I was saying I was. I, I'm, I'm. I'm always so used to saying Sister Henrietta. Yes, yes. But that is a last name. Yes, yes. Hey, Kimber. See you watching, tuning in tonight. So yes, we had an awesome time. Awesome time. I didn't see any questions on the night tonight but yes you guys take the time to go and re-listen to the message on sunday and then be in, take, be in church sunday be in church be in sunday, church sunday. Yes. she's gonna finish it up i don't yeah. think she's gonna finish it up she, she according to your faith you know according to your faith that that message can go on that message but she still Remember she still had, had a point though she had two points i think she had three points yeah, three points for well, that one lesson, that was part one. So you don't think she will get to those three points? Oh, well, she's gonna get to those three points, but that's not the end of the court to your faith message. Remember, Apostle did a court to your mm -hmm. faith years ago, and it oh, was about eight, week. sixteen. Yeah, it was like sixteen series in that lesson. <laughs> I mean, he broke it not down. Not lesson, but series. Though. It was series. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but listen, I'm, I'm excited about the end in in, in the, that part. The other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah because be we got we got to that worship part. We went in. Yeah. Yes. We learned no more good after that. Yes, yes, yes. And then, not only that, um, our church anniversary is coming up. Yes, September the 4th. We'll be oh, celebrating. Was, was, was <laughs> yeah, I know. What you said on last name was? Haynes. Oh, Haynes. You know what? When you said Haynes, I wouldn't spell it like that. Anymore. No. Yeah, Haynes. Yes. 
Yes. Congratulations on your on your on your new jobs, Sister Henry. Yes, and congratulations to um the Marion's grandbaby went to pre-K. I seen it on Facebook. I said, Oh my goodness. And then yes. when she came to the Oh, look at here. She going, what you say? She going where? She going to pre-K. She going to pre pre-K. And I was like, who is that? <laughs> she was all crop like I knew it was. I, and then I, said, I looked at I said, oh, okay. I know. Yeah. But she came in there like you were one of our babies. <laughs> It she is. Said, oh, she... I... You remember you married them? I know that. How many years ago? Had to be in, at least. But when you six, came seven in, seven years I, ago, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about who it was. We I were know. all excited, and I was trying to. Figure you know, you be watching. Was. You be watching everybody grow up on Facebook and yeah. Instagram now. So it's like, oh, <laughs> so I like when y'all share pictures like that. I know y'all probably say y'all don't be sharing. Who we don't. <laughs> <laughs> but let, let let's let the people go. Yeah. Let's let the people go because it's you know what time this it is, is for is the what, Eagles. This is what this is what you hold hostage. You know what time it is for the Eagles. It's time. It's about time to eat. Yeah. Hey, well, listen. You know it's always fun. Thank you all for your comments, your feedback. Thank you everybody who logged on. And listen, next Tuesday we'll be back and we'll discuss another part of relationships. And then we hope that you'll be blessed. And listen, hey, just what? at the matter of time. Everybody relationship ought to be the better because we don't have That's no right. we don't have no excuse. If you're singing, you ought to be living your best life. If best you life. if you engage, you ought to be living your best life. If you're best married, life. you ought to be living your best life. Better because life. Because we have discovered, <laughs> we have this we have discussed every different aspect yes, of relationship on a continuous basis, you know. Yeah. And if you're dealing with something where you want counseling or something like that, then you know, call the office. Call set the up, office. Set up for yes. Yes. You know, and uh they 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 hook you up, you know. Yes. So listen, we're we'll gonna go ahead and let the people go. Let them enjoy their night. Listen, thank you for tuning into Relationship Matters, and, and remember, remember your, your relationship, relationship matters, matters to God. Tonight. Be blessed. Amen. Enjoy. See your you evening. next time.